Hey guys, welcome back to the garden. It's a beautiful evening. I hope we have enough light to make a video. Um, it's not like I don't have enough garden to take care of, but every year I need to have new projects because that's keeping me on my toes and it's fun and uh, I love the experiments in the garden. Uh, so I have, I have lots of projects, but I have three projects I'd like to, to tell you about and then we can follow them in the season and see how it goes. Um, and a wonderful thing has happened. The garden has a new friend called Monica and she, uh, is, she knows uh, Chinese medicine and we have decided that we want to make uh, a bit here uh, where we grow uh, Chinese med medicinal herbs. Uh, so I'm really excited about this because I think that for me is there's lots of food, but I also really would like to get into more of the medicinal properties, qualities uh, of plants and how we could use them. So we are going to cook up some concoctions this year. So. <laughs> I'm excited about that, and I love working with uh, with her. She teach she's teaching me so many things. Uh, the problem is that a lot of these herbs are difficult to get uh, our hands on, so maybe we won't have like a, a full uh, full garden, uh, but a full bed uh, of medicinal herbs. But I will get as many as I can and as I go along. Um, so how I will want to do this is I will take this sort of this uh, half circle and remove this, expand this, and I got a new uh, a new one of these so that we can make this bed just bigger. And the reason why I want to do it here is because uh, water is close by by the greenhouse. I pass here every every day many many times, and I will be able to keep an eye on these small plants and maybe if they need water or anything else. So this is like a, a kindergarten a playpen uh, setup sort of thing. Um, and also uh, it's like uh, there's a saying in Danish, to fluer med et smæk, meaning that if you uh, maybe you use a fly, uh, you, you can kill two flies with one blow. Maybe that's it. <laughs> This is a fuyu, this is um, a persimmons, and as you can see, it really is not happy. It's not happy maybe with this one, it's just not happy, and it's not happy in the grass. And this over here is probably my favorite plum, but if you look at the other plum tree, those two were planted at the same time, and this is a, a thickle, difficult plum, but they are the most delicious ones. So it's a kirkesplomme. I don't know what it is in English. Um, and I'm hoping to, to, give it, uh, to give it a better life along with the other one when we incorporate it into this garden bed. So more friends, more connectedness. Let's see how that works. That should be interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lot of horse manure and compost on top of the grass to be sure, like at least 30 centimeters, to be sure to shade out all the grass. And then I'll just be planting the, the plants directly in that and with the fence around because of the deer, they probably would love themselves some Chinese medicinal herbs, but they're not getting any. So that's why we do it like this. Um, second project is just because this bit is quite annoying to to mow uh, the lawn. We don't really need the grass, and uh, so I'm thinking that I want to make another, yet another example of a uh, fr uh, fruit tree guild. This is a plum, and this is an apple. It's another apple. But I want to uh, cover the soil here with horse manure and compost and then plant all kinds of plants and bushes that thrive along with the fruit trees and use it as an example of a, a, a fruit tree guild. So it's like a collaboration of a lot of plants. And uh, I, will, I, will, I mean, I will make more videos about that and talk about the different plants and their properties and 
and why I choose them over other plants. Um, and just because I think this could be more beautiful, why not? Uh, I have the space and I have the compost. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and then last but not least is one of my most painful corners in the food forest. Um, it's uh, when I first started out and made the food forest, I had huge uh, sheets of black plastic on the soil for about a year uh, before I started planting the, the ground layers and the bushes and all of that. But in some areas, uh, I still had some uh, crabgrass. Uh, I think it's called crabgrass. Um, really annoying and impossible to get rid of. And even if you have just a little bit, it will grow back. Um, so this corner is filled with crabgrass, as you can see. Uh, and I'm trying to clear this. Um, and what I want is, uh, I want to cover all of this with a thick layer of wet newspapers. And then I am going to add more compost, compost everywhere and maybe some horse manure. And then I'm thinking, so this whole area, I'm doing this to shade out the crabgrass uh, because even if you just leave one centimeter in the soil, it'll grow back. And it's so annoying, and it's, it's impossible to get rid of. So my only option is to shade it out as much as I can. Wet newspaper, horse manure, compost, and then I'm thinking maybe Maybe kale and nasturtiums, or that's my idea right now. I might have another one tomorrow. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the plan for this year, among other things. And uh, follow along, and uh, I'll show you more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.